Hi, I'm uh, Professor Pitosh Hayden from the Monash Business School in Melbourne, Australia, here uh, visiting the Africa Business School in Rabat, uh, Morocco. <laughs> Very happy to be here um, in the capacity to provide a workshop on how to publish in top tier international journals for scholars from emerging markets, especially focusing on the specific challenges and opportunities that scholars from Africa may have uh, in the space. And towards the end of the day, I will also be having a research presentation, just a seminar on a project that is top of mind for me, something that I believe is important, especially analyzing and studying how the characteristics of business leaders are changing uh, over time. I guess at the beginning of my PhD, when I started my academic career, I had a general interest in change and innovation. I like technology, for instance. So I always wondered, okay, why do we live in this world of these specific technologies? And while there are answers often sought at the, the you know, at the level of the products and technologies themselves, I started wondering who makes these decisions? Why do certain technologies win? Why do we have certain forms of change? Why do we live in a world of these technological capabilities and not others? That, that rabbit hole led me to just looking more and more at the decision makers that ultimately are accountable and responsible for the decisions and choices that shape and dictate our lives. Uh, as employees, as, as customers, as users. There's a small group of people who are actually making decisions about these. Looking to those, especially in the context of for-profit businesses, oftentimes we think of the CEO, the chief executive officer, the person in charge, ultimately the face of the company as well. Over time, that line of thinking led me to look, okay, how did this collective enterprise come about? And what are the characteristics of those executive teams that are better equipped at driving change and innovation compared to those that seem to be less effective at it. So that line of reasoning led me down uh, a decade and a half of research examining the characteristics of business leaders that drive innovation and change. Publishing in academic journals is challenging for everyone. You know, there's no shortcuts, there's no quick wins. It's something that's uh, very difficult and with the proliferation of business schools and interest in, in um, the world of business and management as a science, there has been more um, people and countries involved in production of knowledge around business and, and, and leadership as well. This comes with particular challenges, especially for scholars that may be in emerging markets and have different access to resources, uh, networks, training uh, and, and the like. The opportunity structure is just uh, very different. However, there's also lots of untapped opportunities in terms of data, in terms of context, of unique problems. Many emerging markets have been at the forefront of a lot of topical issues such as climate change, for instance. You know, some, some countries have been dealing with that on the front lines for, for much longer. So there are opportunities for collaborating, especially with other scholars from all over the world and coming together in cross-disciplinary ways to really, really drive you know, impactful research forward. I think scholars from emerging markets, especially those in places like Africa, they're very close to very impactful phenomena or, or phenomena that have an impact on a lot of people's lives. I think there's an opportunity to document that, consolidate that and package that in, in, a, in, a, in a conceptual vocabulary that we can have conversations about around the world and not only, not only in Africa. I definitely think one of the uh, emerging opportunities for publishing is through collaboration. I see it especially that there's a more there's a push for interdisciplinary research, so people coming together from different fields to solve you know grand challenges and really impactful problems. And I also see we have more uh, interconnectivity. Uh, we have technological capabilities that allow us to collaborate across a vaster geographical range uh, more efficiently than than ever before. So I do emphasize the aspect of finding how you can contribute, and that counts for everyone, but especially for scholars from contexts that have historically been underrepresented or underdocumented in, in management and business theory and research. 
finding ways to collaborate with other scholars, finding those the, this complementarities between some who may have a larger platform, combining that with access to the unique context and challenges, problems, data, uh, and, and, and such, could be a very, very fruitful way forward, which I will elaborate on uh, in the workshop as well. In part, I'm fascinated by how, you know, how our leaders look, how that has been changing over time, how the characteristics of our business leaders have evolved and changed over time, especially how executive teams, boards, or directors, or leaders are becoming more diverse. Part of my fascination with this topic started from when I, when I started my research and looking at the data, primarily looking at data from Western settings, you know, the UK, the US, and it was very visible that the teams looked very similar. There was a certain profile uh, at, the, at the top. And then slowly, you know, we, can start, we started seeing research that challenged this notion that should it be so, should it be the case? How, what happens if it's different without even taking a normative stance on it? What are the implications of when the teams look different or you know, whether they all, where all our leaders look uh, the same? More and more I'm interested in why. What happens from the beginning, from the pipeline, through someone's career, at what point do people tap out, tap in? Why do some people make it to the top? Why do people with characteristics typically associated with underrepresented backgrounds make it to these executive positions? How do we mix it up, shake it up? And I think it's one of the, one of the aspects I'm fascinated uh, by, because I think it's one aspect where we can see change. I think the change and the implications of it, some of it we don't know yet, is just a fascinating topic of, of research uh, for me. The challenge in doing a PhD, a PhD for me has been one of the most fulfilling challenges of my life. Uh, I was very fortunate to be able to, to undertake that and that has helped me, give me the passport effectively to navigate uh, the career. It's just a price of admission, it's a starting point. Uh, it doesn't guarantee uh, success, it doesn't guarantee competitiveness, but it is such a formative period that is so important uh, and I think the first thing to remember for PhD students is it's all about you. You really have to take it, take all the learnings, everything you can during this period. Make yourself an asset, make yourself someone who's valuable to understand your field very well. And I think the way it's definitely changed since I did my PhD is the sophistication of the training and the expectations in terms of technical skills that PhD students have to, have to develop during a fairly short period the three to five years most people will take to complete a PhD sounds like a lot of time, but it's actually pretty short uh, and it's pretty tight, tight timeline to develop the necessary skills to be competitive uh, in, in, in the research and the academic market. So I think definitely one thing that I've seen that's been very important is the sophistication of the technical skills that you know, one needs to develop. The other thing that I would definitely suggest is to also step outside of uh, your office look into the world, you know, whatever the problem is that, you, that you're analyzing, walk around, see where you see this problem, where you see you know, problems of strategy, of international business, of trade, of commerce, of change, of innovation. How do you see them all around you? And look at that, look at that, think about it carefully, make sure you embrace a, a sense of curiosity around the observable aspects of the things we are interested in academically, and don't just over-theorize for the sake of theory. Theory is very important, but also look into the world, get inspiration, and always stay curious. Establishing meaningful partnerships, not only within academia, but with industry or other collaborators outside of academia is becoming more and more uh, important. And I must emphasize that it takes time. It takes time to develop long-lasting relationships. So, one thing I, I tell people to be very careful when you're trying to engage with industry, please do not think about it as a quick win. You're trying to build enduring relationships, you know, and that entails as well making sure you understand the realities, the, the, the specific challenges that industry faces. Understand as well and be able, at some point, you have to also be able to articulate what you can and cannot bring to helping them address those challenges. You know, we don't have all the answers, you know, I don't think we should. Uh, pretend that that's the case, but together we can come up with some creative solutions for perhaps some issues, some, some challenges that, that 
that practitioners, industry um, collaborators may have, then we can inform that either through our analytical skills or our theoretical perspectives, frameworks that they may not be familiar with yet, you know, and together co-create uh, something beautiful. But it's very important to develop, develop that trust, develop that relationship, and go into, go into it with the expectation that this is building a long-term alliance. And this is an interesting one, to look into the crystal ball to see what's the problems of the future. I was very fortunate when I started studying you know, top management teams and business leaders in my specific area, it was, there wasn't that many studies yet. It's very popular now, but at the time, just picking up steam. So I was very lucky, in a sense, to, you know, to be in that space uh, when, I, when I got in there. And this is an important career aspect as well, the timing of when you engage with certain topics. For instance, artificial intelligence, AI, is the, the whole buzzword uh, at the moment. And it's important, I've seen a beautiful facilities here um, around AI as well. As a PhD student, then you have to think, are you at what point are you joining the conversation? You know, there are people who have been working on this topic for maybe a decade. If you join now, can you, can you leapfrog them? So in part, the research topic has to be thinking, okay, what's the thing, what's the topic, what are the problems that we believe are going to be very, very crucial, maybe five, 10, 20 years from now, right? A PhD is very forward looking, we have to look into the blue sky and just think, okay, what's something big? What's a big impact that, that I can have in the world? Part of it is, is the passion you may have for a topic, something maybe closer to your own lived experience that you think is important, whether it's welfare, equity, whether it's technology that you're interested in. And then think about what are the other dynamics that are taking place. AI definitely is the one that, that, that's captivating everyone's attention. But what I would challenge or invite uh, everyone to challenge themselves on what happens after AI, right? So there is a bit of a, a hype cycle element of it. People have worked in for a while. What's coming next? Um, for me, definitely, we still see issues of, of um, the characteristics of business leaders changing in somewhat uh, unexpected directions. And I think one area that I see this particularly, that I find nowadays particularly fascinating is the intersection of our business leaders and the political environment. So how business leaders, CEOs, are actively speaking out on contentious social political issues. And I think these ones, as technology emerges more and becomes more prominent, I think a lot of the, the questions that become more fascinating is, okay, going back now to the human side of it. As technology solves a lot of problems, AI addresses a lot of our needs. Where does our humanness fit in? Where does it fit into strategy and the international business? So I do think technology actually may allow an opportunity to focus back on and focus perhaps more deeply on our leaders, on the individuals, on our employees and the people at the center of organizations. Thank you again for the opportunity of being here at the Africa Business School. Definitely an experience that I, I highly recommend. I think there's so many opportunities happening in Africa and I see Africa Business School as one of the leaders in, in pushing that movement forward and I strongly encourage those who are interested in the prospect of an academic career or collaborations to truly you know, find ways of engaging with the African context and the continent more generally and places that are investing and are really you know, putting the best foot forward such as the, the African Business School. Thank you.